potential energy, probably you know it since high school or middle school, is mass times gravity times the height. The more height you have, the more energy. Gravity is relatively constant, and the more mass you have, the more energy you have. Energy is measured by joules. And if we wanted to do this by joule per unit kilogram, that is energy per unit mass, we need to divide by mass, so take away this. You don't need to be a genius to know that if you open this valve, this will lower and this level will increase until we have the same height. And this is due to the fact of the potential energy. So why do you get this movement? It's because you have a potential energy here waiting to be free and when you open this, it's liberated, the flow goes here and this will increase until they achieve the same level. So there's no actually no complex problems. More height you get more energy, less height you get less energy. The gravitational field, since we're going to do many applications on Earth, we can maintain this constant. And the only problem will be the relative position. When they tell you this is two meters down and this is two meters up, so the actual change is 4 meters, guys, and many times people think 2 meters cancel 2 meters, but actually this is 2 meters minus minus 2 meters. That will be 4 meters. So, yeah, important, this is only in the y-axis, because many times they'll show you this is at 45 degrees, the pipeline is 45 degrees, so you need to calculate only the height on the x value, not in the y value. If you calculate the one on the x value, this will help you for friction loss, but not for potential energy. Uh, potential energy is actually not that huge, so many times we will be able to ignore it. So for example, if you have a height of 4 feet, well, okay, maybe in this system it's important. But maybe let's do, if you we had a pump right here, and you do an analysis here, an analysis here, and the height of the pump is about 10 centimeters. Well, you don't need to include that calculation. It's, well, it will be almost 0 0.00 something compared to the change of pressure. Yeah, for example, this is what I was telling you guys. The pump inlet, 10 centimeters. Okay, this is the section. Pump outlet, 34.5. The velocity in the inlet is 0.3, the velocity is higher, the pressure in the inlet is this one, and the pressure in the outlet is 10 times. What of these heads, potential head, velocity head, or pressure head, do you think it's going to be the most critical one? Well, hopefully by theory you know that the pump is to increase pressure, so yeah, expect this to be huge actually. I will also even ignore velocity because it's relatively small. This is super small, this is small, and this is huge. So once again guys, this is what we use. But recall that you can divide by gravity, or, well, don't forget to use the GC, the gravitational constant, if you're using the English system. You're using SI units, it's so beautiful, you just need to use gravity times that height. Now once again, what do we do with specific gravity? Well, we divide by gravity and we got only height. So the pressure head is defined by this. This is defined, this defined the velocity and the height gets alone which is awesome because you can see the height alone, so you can compare a little bit more on heights. You are not talking about only numbers, but you can relate heights, which is a little bit more, let's say, tangible or more easy to imagine. And that was potential. This was a free preview. You want to get full access, go to my incompressible flow course. The link is in the description of the video. You will get all access. Not only that, you get a very straightforward uh, user-friendly interface so for instance you were analyzing or studying pumps you have it here the pump block and then you have the sections if you were 
for example studying the types of pumps you can go here and you have all the classes right here not to mention that you also have introduction and conclusion of every one of these so for instance if you were studying positive displacement pumps the video is right here you were studying positive displacement pumps in rotatory and reciprocal are also included here centrifugal pumps which is a very important topic in this course you have it right here